I think other people should do what they love for a living because it's part of the reason that we're here on the planet. I read Think and Grow Rich when I was 10 years old and it taught me about the power of thought and the power that we have to create our life. And it's really about pursuing that passion, that thing that just fires you up and makes you feel like it's something you can contribute to the world. I'm America's Wealth Mentor, Linda P. Jones, and I do what I love. I teach people how to be wealthy and smart. The inspiration to pursue what I love for a living actually came from being a young child and sort of being involved in inspirational kind of books. I read Think and Grow Rich when I was 10 years old, and it taught me about the power of thought and the power that we have to create our life. And I grew up in an affluent area, so there were people that were children of professional athletes, CEOs, people that had a lot of money in the Seattle area and we were middle class. My dad was a Boeing engineer, my mom a homemaker, and I'm the youngest of five children. So having a big family, we didn't have tons of money growing up, and yet I saw people who did. And I wondered, how do you get wealthy? And how does that happen? How does money grow? And it became a lifelong question for me to pursue. So I always sort of went down that path of, okay, what is it that I love to do? And how can I incorporate this question that I have about how does wealth really grow and how can I build wealth and have a full life and experience all these things and not have limitation? How can I do all of that? And I just felt I could do all of that because the mindset I had was that I could. So I graduated from high school and then I went to college and got a business degree. And then I got a job on Wall Street for a big Wall Street firm working in the financial planning area, which led me to become a certified financial planner, which teaches you everything about money and investing and taxes and estate planning and all of these things. Most of my career over several decades <laughs> was that I was representing money managers and it was a very prestigious job. It was something that um, I was very successful at, especially there were a few women that did that, but I wasn't feeling completely fulfilled. It was part of my passion, but it wasn't my full passion. And while I was working on Wall Street, I was starting to invest in individual stocks on my own and start to build my own wealth. So my money was growing quickly and I was having success individually a little bit differently than what Wall Street was teaching. So I started to see that I had some differences of opinion on how money really grows than the traditional Wall Street world. That's when I met my husband, he was a lawyer, we met on a blind date and pretty much knew right away he was the one and we dated two years, got married and I was getting up early in the morning to buy my individual stocks while I had my job during the day. So it was a lo you know, long days. I would get up at four or five in the morning to do that and uh, put a couple extra hours in just to work on my stock portfolio. And then that became so successful that it was fabulous. You know, we were going on cruises and we were buying art and we were you know, doing a lot of things with that and really enjoying it. After I had my financial success and thing, things were going great, unfortunately I had a, a really horrible thing happen and that was that my husband died very suddenly. He just dropped one night from a brain aneurysm and was unconscious for the next two weeks and then died. So that of course completely changed my life, but I also really felt a, a knowing that I wasn't living my life's purpose and that I was meant to do something that I hadn't been doing to that point. And it involved teaching people about what I knew about wealth building. And so I sought out mentors, I left Wall Street, I decided to start my own business and 
really went in pursuit of what that meant and developed over the last several years becoming America's wealth mentor and teaching people about wealth building in a way that really wasn't out there from the traditional Wall Street or financial planners or stockbrokers or really nobody was talking about what I had learned was the key to success and what really was the answer to how to build wealth for most people. From the time that I knew that I wanted to teach people what I knew about wealth building, it took me several years, and after my own husband died, I had to deal with the lawyers. I had many things, many decisions to make, and I kept thinking, I'm very experienced. I'm a certified financial planner. The things I had to deal with and the advice I was given was sometimes wrong, but I knew it was wrong because I knew the law and I had studied, but I kept thinking, what about women who are getting advice from lawyers or getting advice from experts and they don't have the background that I do? What do they do and what happens to them? And who's out there teaching them what to do and how to think and how to process and how to look at what decisions to make? And there wasn't anyone. And so it became apparent to me through that and through just the response that I got from people that this was something that was really needed and wanted and it resonated with people. When I was young, I think I wanted to be successful, meaning I wanted to make a lot of money. I wanted to live in a big house and have all the assets and the toys that made me look successful. That was important to me that I looked like I was a success. Now it's different because I've been there, done that, and that didn't make me feel successful. It really was after my husband died that it went from all about serving me to a life of service to others. Because I think you get that point in your life where you have to make that decision. And because I really got that internal message that I wasn't living my life's purpose, I went in search of what my life's purpose was. And it turns out it had a very big component of serving others. And that piece of success was the piece I think my soul was missing when I had just sold out for money, that I wasn't serving others. So it really turned it inside out from being all about me to being all about serving. And that is what's made a complete difference. I think other people should do what they love for a living because it's part of the reason that we're here on the planet. I truly believe everyone has a purpose for being here. And often the thing that we're meant to do is the life lesson that we have learned or the passion that we have to do something. I think people, if they don't know what their passion is, they need to look at their strengths. What are they good at? What do they love? What are they happy doing? Uh, what would they do for free? What would they do without being paid? Um, what do people tell them they're good at? Or what do people come to you for advice about? Oftentimes, we don't even see our own gifts because they're so obvious to others, but they're not obvious to us because we think everybody's good at what we're good at. So we miss our gifts. <laughs> so it's about following that passion, but if you can't see what it is, try to find out from your friends what it might be, but pursue it, try and find out. Take a step in a direction, because if it's not the right direction, you'll find out and you'll course correct. But you need to start in that direction and do it because that's what you're meant to do. That's why you're here, and you're part of a, a divine plan that's unfolding that we all have a part in. And you're needed. You're needed to do that. You're missing, we're missing you if you're not doing your passion. I wanted to share my story with other people today because if I can just impact one person to follow their passion, then that person might impact a person or hundreds or thousands or millions of people to follow their passion, their purpose. And it can make a huge difference. And I know that there's someone out there that might resonate with something I've said, that might change their mind or might make a different decision because of something they learned or something they relate to or something I've inspired them to do or something I've changed their thought about. And if I can just make a difference to one person, then to me, that's what I'm here for. That's 
my whole purpose. Thank you.